What's going on everybody? Teddy Baldassar from teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're gonna be looking at another watch available for purchase from my store. One of my personal favorites, the Meister Telemeter. So this is the watch that I was looking to buy back in the day, decided to go with the Maxbook Chronoscope, but every single time I see this watch, I always have mixed feelings about, did I make the right decision? Because this is a real winner. Also throughout this video, if you are interested in learning a little bit more, hit the link in the description, go to the website, have some more details on this watch. And if you do decide to purchase it, please use Telemeter at checkout to get a discount off a strap up to $100 with your purchase. But guys, let's take a closer look at this watch. First, looking at a rundown of the specs of the Telemeter, we have a case size of 40.8 millimeters, thickness of 12.6 millimeters, lug width of 21 millimeters, lug to lug of 45.2 millimeters, water resistance of 30 meters. Movement is an automatic ETA 2892-2 with the Dubois de Praz 2030 module on top. Crystal is plexiglass. Price on a bracelet is $2,345. Price on a strap, $2,245. And if you use promo code Telemeter at checkout, you can get $100 off any straps with your purchase. Now, back when I was looking to purchase a chronograph for my collection a few years ago, I was looking for a budget around 1000 to 2500 bucks, and I had a short list of brands that I was inspecting. Yet it was Young Hans that ended up coming out on top given their clean aesthetic that I felt was not matched by any other mechanical chronograph in the range. I ended up deciding on the Maxbo Chronoscope, but it was not the only watch that I was looking at from the brand. And to be honest, I had to make a tough decision as this Meister Telemeter was very close to becoming a member of my collection instead. And I think when examining this watch closer, you'll see why that is the case. Now first, putting this watch on the wrist, we have a beautiful fit that leans in the perfect middle ground of having presence without overpowering smaller to medium sized wrist. The 40.8 millimeter with its thin bezel is going to give way to making the dial appear larger than it is when examining it straight on. Yet the 45.2 millimeter lug to lug is very accommodating. This point of accommodation is mirrored when factoring in the bracelet on this piece that is very comfortable with its five length style, mixing both polish and brush finishes to provide a bit of shine to the muted vintage style of the dial. The bracelet does not have screwed in links or micro adjustments, but I do think there's little doubt that this one can be sized to work on a variety of different wrists. And as a result, will be a pleasure to wear once you do get it sized up properly. And I think I'd be keeping this one on with little hesitation. The bracelet meets at a two button release on the underside of the watch and is secure when locked. One other aspect of this case that is noteworthy in the area of its wear is with the pushers along the side of the case in the crown. These three protruding components do not extend out as far as typically seen, and the oval pushers at the two and four are very small and really don't add anything to the dimensions of the side of the case, especially when compared to the traditional pump pushers that will often be seen in, say, value movements. For the crystal of this piece, we have an acrylic offering a crazy dome effect and vintage looks that work exceptionally with the dial. The crystal has an applied layer of Cicrolon coating, a nanogate product that will help with simple scratches and abrasions, but generally you probably will want to be a little bit more careful with these as they're not going to be as rugged as sapphire. Moving to the dial, we have a great one in my opinion, and one that feeds into the common associated idea that I pair with Junghans watches, especially their chronos, as they always seem to manage a wide range of details on the dial without ever making it feel cluttered. Given the activity taking place here, this is certainly a nice feat and speaks to their efficient use of space. The most suitable points on where to probably begin with this dial should probably be the more unconventional features not seen as frequently with one assisting and providing a name to this watch. Along the outside of the dial, this piece features two important scales, with one being a tachymeter featured along the outside, a common feature on many professional chronographs such as the Omega Speedmaster, yet it also includes a less popular telemeter. The use of the telemeter was made popular in chronographs during the 1930s and 40s. In short, a telemeter aims to be able to measure the approximate distance between a user and an event that can be seen and heard. A classic real world example of this that was actually used in the past was on the battlefield. As a soldier could see light of an artillery or a mortar fire, and at that point of seeing the actual fire, they would activate the second hand, and then once something is heard, the soldier would stop the second hand to see the approximate distance away. As an example, a fire was seen and then 10 seconds later it was heard, that would indicate that the fire was just over 3 kilometers away. A feature that yes, probably is not as useful as much today, but I have heard people using this as an example with trying to see how far away lightning is. But again, I think it's really cool and does go and feed into the history behind using one of these scales and think adding some charm to this piece. The Meister Telemeter features loom-filled hour markers to match the loom-filled gunmetal hands. At every point except from the three and nine, which are cut away by the subdials positioned horizontally across. The subdials to me are so just retro and pleasing given their cup concave detail, which really work well when looking at the dial holistically. 
The 9 o'clock subdial measures 30 minutes, and the 3 o'clock subdial measures 60 seconds. Flipping over the Meister telemeter, we have view of an open case back featuring an ETA 2892-2. However, it does feature a Dubois de Praz 2030 chronograph module on top. So these Dubois de Praz modules really set the standard when it comes to modular chronographs, yet this module was probably chosen most likely as a result of wanting to feature a 3 and 9 sub-register layout instead of the vertical layout seen in chronograph movements like the Valju 7750. This movement operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 4 hertz, is hacking and hand winding, so it will stop the seconds when pulling out the crown to the farthest position and has a power reserve of 42 hours. And this particular model that I am reviewing here, we're looking at when combining all the different positions on average plus four seconds a day. Now, when it comes to looking at chronographs in general, the price is definitely skewed to the more expensive end. And in reality, under $2,500 for a mechanical chronograph, there's a lot of copy and pasting just given the typical movements that are within with usually it's the value 7750 for example and with the telemeter here i think we're getting something that really drew me in initially and why i just fell in love with this watch as well as just jung hans overall is again there's just that really well executed display and design of adding a lot of different components to the dial without making it feel cluttered and yes this watch might not be as rugged as others on the market but if you are somebody that really likes this 1930s 1940s chronograph you're going to be really hard pressed to find a better looking one for the price but guys i'd love to hear your thoughts on this piece also if you're interested in learning a little bit more hit the link in the description and use promo code telemeter at checkout to get a free strap with your purchase up to hundred dollars also subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're new here we're going to be releasing a ton more content as well and if you do have any questions about this piece please email me teddy at teddyballstar.com would love to help you out and any purchase also just supports the free content that i produce on my main channel so guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.